Hi, and welcome to your first physics lesson on waves. My name's Mrs. McGee, and I'm one of the science directors, and I'm gonna take you through this introduction to waves lesson. Before we start, it's a good idea to try and avoid distractions. So put your phone away or turn off notifications. You can use the Google documents that we've created for this lesson to make notes, either directly on a computer or by printing it off. Or if you prefer, you can just use pen and paper or work in a notebook. In the first part of this lesson, we are going to learn how to describe what a wave is and what it does. And then in the second part of the lesson, we are going to compare different types of waves. So let's get going. To start off, I'd like you to think back to what you might know about waves already. And I'd like you to try and name as many waves as you can. You can either write this down or do it in your heads. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do this. Ready, go. Okay, let's see what ideas you might have come up with. In the top right hand corner of this slide, you might have recognized a water wave. You could also have come up with a sound wave, a radio wave, an infrared wave, which is a type of heat wave, a light wave, or even a Mexican wave. But what actually is a wave? I'm going to show you a clip now of Mr. Marseille from Outward Academy Acklam explaining what waves are. Whilst you're watching this video, it's a good idea to try and make notes, either using your own notebook or the Google document. The definition of a wave is an oscillation or vibration. So I'm going to write the word oscillation. It's a very key word. Oscillation. It means um, a movement in a backwards and forwards rhythm. Um, so it's an oscillation that transfers energy from one place to another. But the key thing is that matter isn't transferred. So for instance, we have A and we have B, and we want to transfer some energy to A to B. A wave will do that for us without taking A over to B. So I'll give you an example. Here's a daft example with a Mexican wave at a football match. So. We're going to start off, and these are all the people that are sat in their seats at the football match. Okay, so we've got, um, we're going to say that this is the section A of the crowd, and this is section B in the crowd. Now, A is going to make B do something, but without going over there and telling B to do it. And the way that this would happen is this. So we're going to do a Mexican wave. So what's going to happen is A is going to stand up. So I'm going to represent him standing up by just sticking some legs on him. All right. So A is stood up. We'll say it. we'll put A above him. All right. And we'll put the B. So I'm going to fit the legs in. So A is stood up. Now the next person next to A knows, oh, A stood up. Well, I'm going to stand up too. They stand up. So we're now getting the energy is starting to be transferred. It's got to here so far. Now the next person goes, oh, well. I'll stand up as well. And they get to there. And as you can see, the energy just moves along. It's been transferred. And finally, B goes, oh, everyone else is doing it. I'll stand up. So the energy is moved from A to B. But the key thing is A did not actually move B. So no matter was transferred. OK, let's do a quick progress check. I'm going to show you four short multiple choice questions. And in each case, I'd just like you to think about the answer and then we'll go through them. Question one, do waves transfer matter, energy, or particles? Have a think. The answer is B, energy. Question two, what is it that waves do not transfer? Is it matter, energy, or particles? Okay, there are actually two correct answers to this question. 
A, matter and C, particles, because actually matter is made of particles and waves do not transfer matter. Question three, what is it that a wave is produced by? Is it produced by particles jumping around, by particles oscillating or by particles vibrating? Okay, again, there are two correct answers to this question, which are B and C, because actually oscillating and vibrating are two words that can be used to describe the same thing. And finally, question four, what does the term oscillating mean? Is it when particles move around? Is it when particles either move up or down? Or is it when particles move back and forth in a rhythmic way? The answer is, C. Oscillating, which means the same thing as vibrating, is when particles move backwards and forwards in a rhythmic direction. This could be up or down, or it could be side to side. Okay, you should now be more confident with how to describe what a wave is and what it does. You should be able to tell me that waves are produced by oscillations, that they transfer energy, but without transferring matter. In the second part of this lesson, we're now going to look at what the two types of waves are and how we can compare them. At the beginning of this lesson, we looked at several examples of waves. Now, all of these waves can actually be separated into two types of waves. These are mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. I'm going to hand you back over to Mr. Marse, who's going to explain to you the difference between these two. Let's have a look at the two types of waves. So type one is mechanical. So mechanical is a type of wave. Now in a mechanical wave, um, something has to travel through a substance. So we call this a, a medium. So we write through a medium. So a medium is just an, uh, an area of particles. It, they could be a solid, could be a liquid or it could be a gas. So I'll give you an example. So uh, let's say I have a, a trough of water. Now at the moment in my trough of water, we've got a zero point. And the zero point is just the level of water. It's not moving, it is still because there, there is, um, there's no vibration in this water. It's just totally flat. And I'm going to have a positive part and a negative part. And, and the reason I'm doing this is for when we show graphs later on and, and be able to label waves, this will make more sense. So I'm going to get an object. I'm going to put it into my trough of water. So let's say a block of wood. And I'm going to start to oscillate my block of wood. I'm going to initially, I'm going to push my block of wood down into the water. And that's going to create a, a part of the, the wave that does that. It goes down. And then I'm going to lift my wave up back out of the wall and then that's going to create a bit of wave that does that. So, so far we've gone down and up. And if I continue to do that, it'll go down again and up again and down again and up again. And we'll produce a wave. So this is just a, a wave pattern. And all that's happened is I have moved an area here. So this is area A. And it has transferred energy to area B. But I have only moved the matter here. I have only moved these particles in this particular area where the wood is. However, the energy has been transferred to B. Okay, so in terms of mechanical waves, there are a couple of examples. So the one I've just shown you there is a water. So water waves, I'm sure you're all familiar with water waves. Um, another example of a mechanical wave might be sound. Um, now in sound, I'll draw you another picture of a sound. Let's say we have a, um, I'm going to draw a very interesting drawing of a mouth here. There we go. All right. So we've got a, a mouth. We can see it's a mouth because we've got some teeth in it. Now this person is shouting and he's going to shout and, uh, he's trying to get the attention of someone over here. We're going to represent just with their ear. So here is a, as a person over here. Now, as this person shouts, this is the wave moving out and the information can travel from this person's mouth all the way into that person's eardrum and that person will hear them. This is part place A, this is part B. 
and you can see that the matter so this same if this same particles here in this matter so the particles of air that were here have not gone from this person into this person's ear because there could be lots of people listening to this one person and so that that one part of of the the air can't have gone to all the different ears it, it can't so what's happened is that the, the that's sort of hit into another particle which is hit into another particle another one and another one and spread out so the matter hasn't been transferred but the energy has so that is sound um another one that we could have is is earthquakes so earthquake is exactly the same thing but i'm not going to try to draw an earthquake the other type of wave the other category of wave is em and em stands for uh electro magnetic okay em electromagnetic and what an electromagnetic wave is is basically um there has to be a charged particle so we get a charged particle so i'm going to draw an electron so an electron has a negative charge um, but we could easily just have a proton have a positive charge now when an electron oscillates so it moves up and down it does exactly the same thing as when I was moving my block of wood on the water. We get um, we get a wave produced that is like this. So this is the positive, this is the negative. The key thing is as to why this is different to um, a mechanical wave is that it doesn't need to travel through a medium. So it does not need a medium. That's not to say that it 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 won't travel through a medium. It can. So an electromagnetic wave can go through a solid, liquid, or a gas. Um, but it can also travel through what we call a vacuum, an area where there is there is no particles at all. So here's an example. So we've got this big thing in the sky. We've got it a sun. Okay, and we live on a little little planet over here called the Earth. Um, so let's put a little person. They're standing on the earth here. All right. Um, now we're gonna put a get a hat on because it's hot. So get a little sun hat. Now this sun gives out waves. It gives out these electromagnetic waves. Um, and it gives out all different kinds. It gives out some that have got sort of long wavelengths. It's some that gives out very, very short wavelengths and, and some that got even longer. But it gives out loads in all directions. But we can detect these because this person who is standing on the earth would be able to see the sun. So that's a light wave. So they can see a light wave. And this person also might get quite hot if they're stood in directly in the sun. So that would be an infrared wave. I'm just going to write IR. But they would, they would feel the heat of the sun. So this whole area here between the sun and the person is space. And space is what we call a vacuum. It contains no particles. So there's no medium, there's no particles there. So the sun isn't knocking one particle to the next particle into the next particle, like with um, a mechanical wave. There's nothing happening at all in terms of movement of particles and movement of matter. EM waves are just able to travel through a vacuum, and that's the key difference. So mechanical waves have to travel through a medium, a solid, liquid, or a gas, whereas an electromagnetic wave does not need to travel through a medium. Okay, welcome back. You should now have a better understanding of what waves are and what the difference is between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. So let's do a quick progress check. What I'd like you to do is compare mechanical and EM waves. Now remember, when we compare, we need to give the similarities and the differences between the two things that we're comparing. One good way of doing this is using a Venn diagram. On the left-hand side, let's put mechanical waves, and on the right-hand side, we'll have EM waves. And then any similarities between the two will go in the middle overlap section here. I'd like you to sketch this Venn diagram quickly or use the one in the Google Doc. Here are eight statements. What you need to do in this task is sort these into your Venn diagram, depending on whether you think that they are just for one particular type of wave 
or whether they are relevant to both of the types of waves. I'm going to give you two minutes to do this task. Ready, go. Let's mark this activity together now. Let's bring up the Venn diagram again. So the first statement produced by oscillations, that's for both types of waves. So we can put it in the middle section here. Number two, the ones that are produced by particles vibrating are mechanical waves. And number three, it's electromagnetic waves that are produced by charged particles oscillating or vibrating. Number four, the wave that can travel through a vacuum is the electromagnetic wave. And number five, it's the mechanical wave that cannot travel through a vac vacuum. Six is the mechanical wave that needs to travel through a medium. So that's your solid, your liquid, or your gas. Now for seven and eight, it's both types of waves that transfer energy, and they both do this without transferring matter. So there you have it, a nice comparison between mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. So in the middle, the similarities, both of them are produced by oscillations. They transfer energy, but do not transfer matter. Mechanical waves only are produced by atoms oscillating. They can't travel through a vacuum and need to travel through a medium. And electromagnetic waves only are produced by charged particles oscillating, and they can travel through a vacuum. Well done for making it this far. You have nearly finished this lesson. In the second part of the lesson, we learned to compare the two different types of waves. These were mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. And you should now be able to tell me for both of these how they are produced, how they travel, what the similarities are and the differences between them. To finish off this lesson, I'd like you now to complete the Google quiz that was assigned with this video. This is a really good way to check your progress and it will only take you about five minutes to do it. The quiz will be automatically marked, which means that you will get your score and your feedback straight away. Good luck and well done again for finishing the lesson.